The illative sense, ladies and gentlemen, is ultimately what you use when you make that tough decision. It's not just your brain, not just your gut. It's this combination. It's, it's the whole process, and it's more than the sum of each of those parts, okay? So that's step two. Everybody with me? What would be required of you after you've made, you know, you've, you've analyzed, you've, you've gathered the information, you've analyzed it, you actually now come to the decision, which is almost anticlimactic. This is where the drama is. This is where you're feeling bad or triumphant or just interesting. You make the decision. You know when you've made the decision usually. It's, it occurs very quickly. Sometimes there's an, a revealing event and it's almost anticlimactic. But then there's a new struggle. Part three to this. What has to happen after you make a decision? Uh, yes. Uh, you have to have what virtue? You have to do it. You have to do the decision, right? Whatever you decide. How many times have you made a decision but you really didn't make a decision because you didn't do anything? And then it wasn't a decision. You only know you made the decision when you do the decision. When you choose. You had to choose, Michael, to come to Grand Valley. That's doing the decision. And what virtue is required to do it? To say, I am going to eliminate every other option. Executing the decision. Uh, but you need a virtue. You need, you need something in your character. You need courage. You need the courage to say, I trust this option and I will eliminate every other option. Now there's something, this is the virtue. The courage to do the decision you make. Now, for those of you who have had experience with courtship, this is why marriage is such an awesome decision. Because in our culture, not necessarily in other cultures, but in our culture, you are making a decision, thinking about courtship, using all of this, and you're, you're deciding I will choose one person to be with to the exclusion of all others. And you need courage to make that decision. Very few human beings are just so absolutely clear that they, they lack you know, the sense that there are alternatives out there. You need courage to actually do the decision you make. And I'm using these verbs very carefully, very deliberately. You make a decision, you're crafting a decision, and then you do it through courage. Now, you fire the person. You choose the college. You choose your mate. You marry the person, or you, you engage. What's the next phase in your decision? You kind of edged toward it. Christine? Stick with it. Stick with it. That's right. or intelligently adapt. You stick with it, and you have to learn to deal with something called regret. We all know regret. You actually, when you make a major decision, a part of you mourns for everything you've lost. Economists have a word for this. How many of you have studied economics in here? OK, three of you. It's called opportunity cost. Do you know what opportunity cost is? What is opportunity cost? In order to do A, you're giving up the opportunity to do B. Exactly. To do A, you're giving up all the next best things in B and C and D and E and all of those, all those other options. But opportunity cost specifically tries to focus you on the next best alternative. And you, you, lose, you lose the opportunity cost. Uh, you lose your choices. Now that goes against a little bit of our grain because what we want to do as people 
And this goes all the way back to Socrates and Plato and Aristotle. We want to gather in as much good as possible. And so we're stubborn about these things. We're greedy about these things. Truth be told, you want all of the benefits of A from your decision, but because you're human, you also want B and C and D and all the benefits that come with those. But decisions mean that you are foregoing those other things. And that's at the heart of leadership. Leaders have that character which doesn't just sort of float around between A and the opportunity cost will be lost B. Leaders say, I can make a decision. First of all, I'm, I'm a competent adult. I can gather the information. I'm not afraid of multiple perspectives. I can look at the costs and benefits. I can weigh the options. You go through this process. You know that your whole being is going to be involved in a big decision. And you will learn. Leaders learn. This is very important. We talked about trust. Leaders actually learn to trust their own ability to make these decisions, okay? And then they make the decision. They craft a decision based on the information they have. And is it absolutely the reason we say the word make in the English language is because it's absolutely unique in time. No one will ever be in your shoes making exactly your decision. So you make a decision. And we know that in making it, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. You are using the illative sense, which is the gathering of all of the parts of your being to make that big decision. That's why it's not just a head thing, and it shouldn't be just a gut thing. Ultimately, it's a, a whole Michael thing, a whole Sharon thing, a whole Kathy thing, a whole Andy thing, a whole Kepha thing. It's, it's big, it's that big to make the decision. You trust that. I'm going to put in big letters here, you trust it. You trust your ability to do it using the facilitative sense. And then you have to have the courage to implement it, whether it's executing the criminal, firing the person, choosing the college, joining the army, or marrying your beloved. You have then to do it. Sitting on the sideline is not an option in life. Then everybody else and everything else is making decisions for you. That's not leadership. It's not even followership. Good followers don't do that either. So you have the courage actually to implement the decision, and then you have to be able to deal with buyer's remorse, second guessing, and opportunity cost. Those are the words we use in English. Buyer's remorse, second guessing, Monday morning quarterbacking, and opportunity cost. Okay? To make a decision, ladies and gentlemen, is an awesome thing that happens to you. Mentally, physiologically, morally, it is an awesome thing. And leaders have that ability. When we send people to City Hall, when we send people to Lansing, when we elect somebody to lead our church, when we elect a president of the United States, we are asking them to use their highly developed sense of decision making, to trust their decision making, and we are placing our trust in them. And they better not betray our trust in the process, but this is all that happens in decision making. Makes sense to you. Any questions? Okay, well let's take a few minutes, oh yes, Kathy? What if you, I know you're supposed to stick with your decision, but what if you just realize after some time that it's just absolutely the wrong decision. Then you're faced with a new decision and you go right back. Kathy Rent asks a key question. Brian and I, in all of our leadership studies that we use at the Hallenstein Center, call it adaptive intelligence. Because we are intelligent, sentient creatures, because we always are taking in information, Kathy asks, what do you do if, okay, you're, you've made the decision. Uh, you choose, let's say you chose Ohio State. And you got down there, and like any intelligent person, as soon as you got on campus, you thought, this is a mistake. <laughs> I'm sorry, if there are any Buckeye, actually, one of my dearest cousins is a Buckeye, so I'm only kidding. 